stick it into a corner and get the truck sideways. You're not gonna find that in anything else. And the cool thing is it's dead silent, so no one hears you driving like this. So you can really drive like a complete idiot in the snow, full rally mode. You know, go in, you just always wanna go slow into a corner because conditions change and full rally mode this thing up the hill. It's unlike anything else. Hello and welcome to beautiful snowy Colorado. Alyssa and I are here with two off-roading-ish vehicles. We have our Rivian R1T and also the new Land Rover Defender. This one's the long one, the 130. You can see it goes on forever. But what I wanted to see is what's better in the snow? Traditional combustion with, you know, normal drive line, center differential, or an electric powertrain with four individual motors. So it's a little bit of a battle between old school versus new school here in the hills, the mountains of Colorado, where we just got dumped on with about 10 inches of snow. The idea for this video is pretty simple. We're gonna jump first in the Land Rover Defender 130. Land Rover is known, of course, for making some of the best off-roading adventure vehicles of all time. And it's no secret I am a Land Rover fan. That's why I asked to review this Defender 130. Even though it's a combustion mild hybrid version, I thought it would be really interesting to compare this drive line to that of the Rivians in the snow. Both of these vehicles are on winter tires. We're on Continental Winter Contact uh, TS650Ps. And on this one, we're on Nokian Hakapolita uh, SUV studded tire. So the Rivian's on a bit more of an aggressive tire. But the whole point here really isn't to compare their full capabilities to see which can go up certain things. I wanna get a feel for how they drive, which is the most natural, which is the most confidence inspiring. So we're gonna run through a few different tests, a few different challenges. The one actually starts right here, a crazy hill climb right to the top with this snow and slushy ice surface. I wanna feel turbo lag in this automatic transmission stuff versus instant torque of the Rivian, but also maybe too much torque. Maybe the four motors aren't great. Interestingly, the Defender really competes with the R1T sister car, the R1S, the SUV. That would have been the ultimate comparison, but we're working with what we have. It's really Defender, Land Rover versus Rivian, terrain response versus their drive modes. Let's go take the Land Rover up first. We'll leave the Rivian down here and see how it does on the hill climb. You join me inside the Defender 130 now and you know, I love this thing so much. It's so great. The one thing it's really missing is a fully electric powertrain. Um, I've come close to actually buying Defenders twice now. Uh, first, before we bought our Sprinter, I thought, oh, we'll do an overland build on one of these. And then we ended up going with the van life situation. And then um, when we were getting our Rivian, you know, I didn't know how long the wait times were going to be. Luckily, we got our truck pretty quick. But um, the idea was to actually get one of these to hold us over for the Rivian uh, because it's just such a great adventure vehicle. So, um, and again, the, the downside is that it's not electric. You can get a plug-in hybrid version of this maybe not in North America yet, but they pair it with their garbage four-cylinder Ingenium uh, thing. Don't like it. This is the inline six Ingenium, 400 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque, plus or minus, and it's really good. It's just a little laggy in my impression. So let's get into how this drives in the snow, and then we'll jump in the Rivian and see if it's any better or worse. That's kind of the idea here. Um, what I have pulled up is our 4x4 info on the screen here. Land Rovers are, of course, built for off-roading and overlanding. This is uh, no exception. This one's really built for this stuff. This one's not optioned with the rear locking differential, but it's not needed for this type of driving. It can simulate that with brakes if it needs to, and it does a really good job. So what I'm gonna actually pull up here is our terrain response programs. We have eco, normal, grass, gravel, snow, mud, ruts, rock crawl, whole bunch of other ones, deep sand, water wading mode, and then there's a configurable mode where I can actually go through and configure our custom terrain response. And I can go through and have center diffs locked, powertrain in certain modes, traction control, more or less wheel spin. What I think we're gonna do is because we're in snow, we're just gonna use the grass, gravel, snow program. And then in the Rivian's drive mode, we will use the uh, snow program. Now, there is a low traction launch mode in this. We're not gonna do that because we want uh, just normal driving in grass, gravel, snow. But if you're stuck in the snow, low traction launch will actually, you can put your foot on the accelerator pedal and it progressively applies power so you don't just spin the heck out of the tires when you're moving. Sometimes in snow, you wanna do that though. 
So I think for this climb, we're gonna run uh, traction control off, which is sort of like a reduced mode. It's still on for yaw control, but it does let some wheel spin happen. So grass, gravel, snow, ESP, halfway. The reason I'm doing this is because I think most people buying Defenders or Rivians are car enthusiasts, driving enthusiasts, and you know we wanna have the, the vehicles set up kind of how we want them. So that's how we are. Let's just throw it in drive S. I'm gonna let the car do the uh, shifting itself here. It's such a smooth engine, you can't even tell that it's on in this thing, it's so nice. The 130 is the long boy. I wouldn't, if you turn around actually, look how far back it is. Full room in the third row for, for adults, way more than R1S. Um, I would get the 110. I think the 130 looks a little bit silly actually. So yeah, let's pull out here and let's go rally it up this hill. It's a really steep hill climb and I'm gonna let it do automatic shifting and I'll let you know how I'm feeling. So hard power, a little bit of oversteer, very like Audi style, like 50-50 weight distrib or power distribution. So you can see kind of getting it in, foot down, have to wait for it to change down and then we get this big wallop of torque. Um, the engine and transmission calibration is my biggest issue with this. Come on, full power, here we go. So a little bit of oversteer and then ESP kicked in. Strong power on the uphill. Thing sounds great winding it all the way out. Coming in on braking, it's an electronic uh, brake booster so I don't feel any ABS but I can hear it click away. Slow in, again, hard power, a little bit of rotation. You can see it upshifts and grabs brakes to kind of stop the rotation there. I would probably be driving it in manual mode if it were me. But you can see really nicely balanced, very, very off-roady drivetrain tuning in grass, gravel, snow. Have to wait a while for it to kick down, but overall, so much fun to dance around. You know, the JLR engineers, they know how to make a good handling product, and this certainly is no exception. So that's really the on-road portion of the test, but now I'd like to go up a dirt road, still in grass, gravel, snow. The Rivian's parked there. We're about to run that up the hill. So now we're getting into, you know, sort of a little bit less plow situation. What I'd like to do actually is to do a full throttle launch comparing this to the Rivian. And for this particular test, I think I'm actually going to keep it just in the grass, gravel, snow traction control on. I'll lock it in manual first and we'll get an idea of how traction control helps us up this hill. Uh, in comparison to the Rivian, because I noticed in this, sometimes it bogs down, especially when you have yaw, but let's see how it does in a straight line. In this, I'll brake boost it and then pop off the brakes. When we do the Rivian, I'm just gonna mount the accelerator pedal. So a little bit of brake boost, go. So you can see a little bit of wheel spin came up there. Traction control spinning away. Right up to the rev limiter into second. Really allowing quite a bit of wheel spin actually. That was pretty cool. We had a lot of revs, a lot of wheel speed going. And uh, of course the inline six just sounds incredible. But the, the real problem with this is if you want to get out of a situation, just watch the lag, foot down. There's boost. I mean, it's so laggy. Um, and that's just the nature of having a turbocharged engine at 8,100 feet of elevation. It's, there's really no way around it. So as we come up this way, I can upshift into third, really nice mid-range grunt. Suspension is incredible in this vehicle. Um, you really feel none of the bumps we're driving on, no squeaks, no rattles. And there's just a little bit more that you have to do when driving this vehicle in the snow than presumably the Rivian. You can see I'm working the gear selector here, um, you know, thinking about where my revs are. I need to put my foot down a bit earlier before I go. And then it's a little bit of a question of, okay, where is the power actually going? Because I'm in grass, gravel, snow, I don't have the center diff locked and have a locked 50-50 power distribution all the time. It definitely goes rear first and then it's like, oh, let's lock the diff. And you'll see it pop up here and there's three or four stages of center diff locking of how you know how much locking force you want all the way to a, to a full 100% lock. And it's kind of electronic-y in the way that it goes about its business. But the nice thing about terrain response is when you're in grass, gravel, snow, it really does stay out of your way as to what you need to do. So it is really beautiful up here today, just heading up to the uh, the cell towers and we'll, we'll flip around and run the Rivian on the same loop. Then I'd like to find some deep snow actually and see how both do in that uh, 
Uh, I also think we should address address batteries and range in snow conditions versus a combustion vehicle, and we'll do that towards the end of the video. So here's the Defender 130 on the climb. We're just reaching the end. My thoughts on it are, uh, you know, really amazing vantage point out the front of this thing. You really just get a sense that you are, you know, ready to go to wherever you need to go in this thing without question. And uh, it's always a bit spooky up here, isn't it, Alyssa? Yeah, it's all nice and cloudy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you get the sense that this is built to conquer Africa or go to the North Pole and, you know, it just feels like you can beat this thing up off road and it'll take it and you really can. Um, but there are some issues with the inputs with this vehicle, for example, transmission and lag to get it on boost really bug me. Um, honestly, if I was to get one, I would spec up the V8 110 because then you have the supercharged engine, instant response. And I know it's very expensive, but I think it's actually worth it. I really love the inline six when it's on throttle, but when you just need it to go, there we go. Just takes a little bit too long. So let's go jump in the Rivian and see how it does on the same climb with the four motors. I, I have no idea what it's gonna do. I actually haven't had it in that much snow before. So this will be interesting. And now you join me in my Rivian R1T. Now you guys are pretty familiar with this vehicle, so I already made a whole video about the new snow mode. And so to keep it kind of a fair comparison between the Land Rover and this in terms of drivetrain settings, we're gonna go snow just like we were in that vehicle. We're gonna go stability half off. The nice thing about the Rivian is it lets you go full off for big skids, but uh, the Land Rover doesn't. You heard it kicking in on the hill climb, so we're gonna go reduced regular ride height, and there's a new brake regen setting in this, which is low, um, which means that you're not actually locking wheels as much, and it really helps in the snow. I guess a big difference between electric and combustion is regen, and um, part of the regenerative braking in the Rivian, the problem was it was almost too strong, and they didn't have great drivetrain characteristics to uh, stop the wheels from just locking. In the Land Rover, of course, it's just going to either have engine braking or just coast, and then you're constantly using the friction brakes where it has a built-in hill descent control mode, as well as ABS through the uh, electronically controlled brake pedal. Uh, you know, totally different braking strategy than this vehicle, which is when you lift off the accelerator pedal, the motors basically go in reverse, try and charge the battery on slippery roads that can lock the wheels. So it needs regen drag control logic, which this has improved. Uh, and then the brake pedal is actually just a regular hydraulic brake. You feel the ABS pump through the uh, brake pedal, etc. So almost newer school stuff in the Land Rover, which is interesting. So we got all the headlights and stuff on. We got it, the truck all set kind of how we want it. And uh, by the way, this is the four motor version. I, they don't make the two motor one yet, but maybe you'll find this video in the future. I'll do a four motor versus dual motor Rivian as soon as we can test one of those uh, really at the earliest opportunity. So let's go out and see how this thing is to drive. So full power, very stable, strong acceleration, instant acceleration. That's the best part right here. You know, not to really compare the two vehicles, but this is just a way sportier experience. I have instant control over what the vehicle's doing, which is just insane. So come in here, we'll give it a little bit of throttle, a little bit more throttle, wide open. It's just struggling for traction, and it's just keeping us right on the grip of what's available there. So, so much better control than the Land Rover, which is power, spin, cut power, electric motors you can change instantly. So big fan here into the corner, super easy to modulate, a little bit of oversteer, big power on the way up, into ABS, braking, so much more confidence inspiring here, I would say, because the vehicle's just doing exactly what I'm asking of it to do, which is really great. So just coming into this corner, I can give it the power I want. It's just trying to find the right wheels and tires to uh, give the traction to. What I'd like to do is actually run up the hill into sport mode now, uh, which is something that you can't do in the Land Rover. So I'm thinking if we go full stability off in sport mode, the Rivian will actually do a little bit of torque vectoring, which means it's gonna send power to the outside tire to sort of induce oversteer, if you will. And that's gonna really help rotate the vehicle around and it should be kind of like a fun drifting machine. That is a character that you don't typically get with um, you know, a combustion vehicle. You can't just say, you know, unless you have torque vectoring rear diffs and all these mechanical components, you can't change the character of your drivetrain nearly as much as you can with a four motor electric system. I also just wanna make a quick point. I've been pretty critical of Rivian's four motor strategy. 
I've sort of said, you know, I think they really need to work on their tuning. They really need to work on, uh, you know, basically not locking the wheels in the snow. And every software update that I've gotten on this truck has improved it over and over. So I really think they're honing in what they can do with these Bosch motors, these four individual motors, um, to make the truck respond exactly with what we're looking for. There's still some challenges when we go into extreme off-roading situations, and that would be like, um, uh, you know, like if we got two wheels in the air and two wheels with traction, it's not so good at doing a virtual locking differential. But what it is really good at is um, actually just sending the power where it needs to go on like a flat surface. So for like dirt drifting or stuff like this sort of rally mode. So let's go into sport mode here. It's going to actually lower down. I'm going to go stability off, turn off stability. Auto hold took forever to actually lock the truck right there. It was just rocking on the motor power. And what do you say we go send it up the hill, Alyssa? Okay, I'm strapped in. You're strapped in. So this is the character. Let's see how fun this thing is. Coming out full sideways, yes. It still does some spin control, which is kind of funny. So we can get it into the corner here. Look at this, just super nice. Applying power gets us really nice neutral oversteering character. You basically want to go, especially for this corner, slow in, get the truck set, and then do a kind of a big skid on the way out. I'm wide open throttle, even with stability off, it's not allowing much wheel spin. That's probably to protect the half shafts from when you're on a low mu surface to a high mu. They don't want to snap half shafts or motor mounts potentially, but it's just this character where you can just stick it into a corner and get the truck sideways. You're not going to find that in anything else. And the cool thing is it's dead silent, so no one hears you driving like this. So you can really drive like a complete idiot in the snow, full rally mode, you know, go in. You just always want to go slow into a corner because conditions change and full rally mode this thing up the hill. It's unlike anything else. Um, that is so cool. And really, honestly, Land Rover cannot electrify the Defender quickly enough. All right, so that's enough playing around. Let's go back to snow mode. Let's go back to the original settings and see how it kind of does up here on a little bit less plowed surface. We'll do that same acceleration test that we did in the Land Rover in the same spot and see how this does with uh, traction control system feeling. So, ready? I'm just gonna mat the throttle and let's see how, how long it takes for it to build up speed. Full power. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. It's giving us more and more as we build speed there. More power. Certainly way less drama than a combustion vehicle, which you really get the sense that having an electric motor where you can have that instant control over wheel speed allows you just to keep a little bit faster rotation than, um, you know, than the vehicle travel speed, which is exactly what you want in the loose stuff. You kind of want a little bit of spin all the time. The, the Land Rover goes, you know, sort of, whoa, big spin, let's rein it in, big spin, let's rein it in. And there's only so many changes of power output you can do with a turbocharged inline six cylinder, three liter engine that has a lot of inertia built up in it. This is just power down, instant response, no crazy slipping. And it's so impressive how well Rivian has tuned uh, this snow mode in my impression. Now, in terms of tire differences, they're actually pretty similar. Uh, these are, of course, much better suited for ice conditions being studded. Um, but I, I have to say, I'm impressed with both the Continental and here the Nokians on the uh, R1T. I think probably you can't go wrong with either of them. You know, Nokian sponsors our channel, so that's my recommendation. But I'm really impressed with the Continentals that are on the um, Defender as well. In terms of ride quality, you know, if we're just doing a little bit of vehicle comparison, this would be more like R1S versus Defender. Very similar ride quality off-road. Really soaks the bumps, backs it off. You have height control. Um, actually, I think the Land Rover's air suspension component's probably a bit beefier than the Rivian. I've overheated the compressor on this a few times, and once you do one big height change, it's got to build up air pressure in the chamber. The Land Rover seems to just go up and down all day long um, with very little care in the world. Of course, you'll reach its limits, but that seems to be a little bit more of a robust suspension system than what's on this. This is really a technically impressive suspension system um, because it has the crazy stabilizer bar, um, you know, hydraulic situation. 
um, and I never thought I would say a Land Rover suspension system seems like it would last longer than this, but Rivian's already had to replace my air struts on this truck. Um, and I'll have a video on that on my personal channel. So there you go. Uh, electric versus combustion on the hill climb. What do you say we go find some deep snow and then talk about maybe some of the downsides of electric in winter time, um, which is kind of what we're running into here with this truck where we're getting, let's take a look at our efficiency, uh, 0.84 miles per kilowatt hour over the last uh, 15 minutes. So really not re much range out of this vehicle driving it like this. Well, to finish off the video, there's honestly, I can't believe it, in just a couple hours it took us to get up there and back, most of it's melted around here. We couldn't find any super deep snow other than honestly here in the neighborhood. I'll just show you, we can drive up through like these plowed areas. So let's just raise the suspension a little bit. And this is like gnarly deep snow. This is not messing around, just driving down our sidewalk here. But you can see both have no, you know, this has no problem doing it. The Rivian would have no problem doing it. So I guess let's kind of finish up the video with final thoughts. Um, you know, if we look at electric versus combustion in this scene, sort of the best of combustion for off-roading and snow technology, which would be, of course, Land Rover, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, cue all the comments about reliability now. And then, uh, you know, you get the best of electric with off-road, you know, sort of probably right up there with Hummer EV and the Rivian, different, little bit different strategies, but both using individual motors to control the, at least the rear axle, the Rivian using individual motors in the front axle as well. Um, you really get a sense that, okay, electric is just so much better suited for the driving environment. For example, I've configured a custom terrain response setting where everything's sort of in responsive mode now. And even then, yeah, it hangs the revs up a little bit higher in automatic mode, but just the time from foot down to there's boost. <laughs> That just, there's nothing you can do. And, and what's crazy is this is a mild hybrid um, with an electric pancake motor on the, uh, oh wait, maybe this one uses an electric turbocharger, if I'm thinking about this correctly. Uh, I think the Mercedes EQ is probably the best implementation of that because they use the electric pancake. So many different kinds of mild hybrid, that's for another video. Um, but you know, the sense of, okay, what's the safer feeling option going out? You know, let's say you're going up to your cabin in the woods, um, Honestly, there is something very predictable about this car that you just don't get in the Rivian, which is I know that if I put my foot down, power's going to at least all four wheels a little bit, and you don't get this odd sensation where one wheel just spins up instantly. And that might be a little bit better brake control in this versus motor control in the Rivian, um, but I do just get a sense that, okay, this is probably a little bit better tuned for the kind of off-roading slushy stuff that I prefer. With that said, I think the compromise of not totally knowing where all the power is going uh, in the Rivian is worth it. And the reason I say that is you get so much better throttle modulation. Honestly, the vehicle is a little bit more fun to drive than this, although I really like this. Basically, the perfect vehicle would be an electric defender for this kind of stuff. And thankfully that exists. It's called the Rivian R1S or the Hummer EV SUV. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way to sum it up. Land Rover, can't wait for you to put the battery electric version in this. The one last thing, I guess, the, the double last thing is the range. If you're going up into the mountains, we burned a lot of juice in the Rivian. We used, I don't know, 85 to 50% or so. Mm -hmm. And here we use less than a quarter tank. So, uh, you know, you just can put a lot of energy, even though it's less efficient, it's got a big fuel tank. So that's a consideration, of course. No chargers where we were. Nope, none. None. But uh, of course we were able to do it and we regened on the way down. Uh, but there is something, you know, if you're going to remote places, going exploring, the Rivian's still very compromised for that. Where this just is like, let's just put some extra fuel tanks on the side of it and then go send it through Africa. It'd be really fun. That'd be a great adventure. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye from the Land Rover. Full send. <laughs> And uh, thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. I hope this helps. I hope it really shows just how impressive an electric powertrain is in slippery surfaces. And uh, can't thank you enough for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.